walls belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. I've got to find my corner of the sky. After flying high in Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, my guest today found his corner of the sky as the title character oh. in the Tony-winning revival of Pippin. Don't laugh, Mr. Matthew James Thomas. <laughs> You've heard a lot of corner of the sky jokes. I have. Sorry about that. that no, that was the best I so just, far. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I, just couldn't, I couldn't resist. How are you? Welcome. Hi. How are you doing? I'm First good. of all, yeah, thanks for having me. You are suddenly blonde. I, like literally, like you just Pippin suddenly changed hair color. It was kind of funny. I didn't tell the cast until. I jumped through the hoop, and so Patina's you just showed face, up, you and she turned around and looked at me and was like, this is a new Pippin. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Know, that's it worked within the concept, and <laughs> I spoke all the, you know, everybody knew, like Diane had spoken to everybody and just said, look, I'm going to do it today and just see if so I can So you had permission it. to do this? Absolutely. Okay, well, let's, let's talk. It's one way to get sacked on Broadway is change your appearance completely and just I was gonna say, <laughs> run back on stage. You don't match the front of house anymore. Actually, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that I guy? think people are like, who is that the guy that we were supposed to? Yeah. This, but this is actually like you were, you most of your career you were blonde until you until you got to New York to do Spider Man, right? You it's are funny. Blonde. People have changed my appearance nearly my entire life. I've always been like different hair colors. Oh yeah. Everyone's kind of miserable about the way that I actually look, so they change my hair or whatever else. So I, I think. Um, all through my career have been different hair colors, but this, I, I changed it brunette for Peter Parker when I came over to the States three years ago, and since haven't had a break and had a chance to actually dye it back. So this is an attempt at what my hair should look like. So this is close to your Close, actual... it's a little grayer than this, but it's, you know, it's somewhere in between. Because you're shirtless and Pippin, mm -hmm. did you also have to do anything with your armpits? Did, <laughs> did it have I to have match? To did you have to like color? Absolutely. I was wondering how, I'm there how other, but, I mean, other parts of your behind. body had to be colored. <laughs> Actually, somebody in Boston did come up to me and she said, she asked me after the show, she's like, I don't, I don't want to be rude, but do you paint yourself white? And I was like, no, I'm just very pale. <laughs> <laughs> so that was actually a question that was asked to me at one point in time, um, trying to embrace the, the, uh, the fair nature of my skin. But no, my hair, no, I didn't dye my armpit hair. Is that okay, the answer to your question? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So how is it going? Wow, Tony winning revival, smash hit. I mean, you guys knew you had something special, I think, the minute you got into rehearsal. Yeah, I mean, Pippin's a great story anyway. The, uh -huh. book is, the book is really impressive. And I think, you know, actually a lot of people say the book is its weakest point. I completely disagree. Hmm. And having had spent so much time with it now, I understand just how clever those guys were when they put this thing together. And whether or not they knew it or not, it, it, it's a really fantastic piece. It, it really is so deep and, and dark and interesting. It's, it's, you know, whatever you might think Pippin on the surface is, it's there to confuse you and it's there to mm -hmm. shock you. It's great. What was the scariest, you do a lot of physical stunts or mm -hmm. you, you're all over the place. What was the, the, the thing that you were most scared of or? I, I try not to be scared. It's, it's all a little bit nerve wracking. In, in moments, I think I just try to throw myself at everything and the pole drop is always very scary because I literally just have to put my trust in the hands of those acrobats, um, which it very much is. Yeah. They've never dropped me, and I don't think they ever will. But it's um, you know it's it's a high it's a high pole. It's a, it's a big. I climb up pretty high and then just let go, and I've never done anything like that without wires before. Um, that's a whole different story because you I mean you have to put your faith in the wires. It's like in Spider Man, you put your faith in the system, and then that's it. You trust it and you do it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. It's like I trust these guys, and I just do it. But it's it's different. There's like a it's like a gravity thing going on there. <laughs> like right, you're falling, right. Falling literally through the air. Are you working out like crazy? Not anymore because of the show. Okay. I was in Boston. I was running and uh, doing the the P ninety X. You know the good old uh -huh. home workout video and annoying Patina. Patina was downstairs when we stayed in Boston. It was so funny. She was like, "What are you doing upstairs?" Because <laughs> I was just like, boom. Boom, <laughs> trying to do my workouts like an idiot at like two o'clock in the morning in Boston because I had wow. nothing else to do. Um, you know, that's actually the, kind of the first time I've ever really f focused on working out because, you know, it was in the script I had to take my shirt off, which was terrifying at first. Was that terrifying? Yeah, absolutely terrifying. I don't know. I always was just a little bit insecure about that. Like, yeah. I'm not, not in real, like in real life, but the fact that I knew that I, people, like, eyes were going to be on me and it was going to be, you know, me out there with the shirt off. And 
I wanted to look good. I wanted to, you know, look healthy at least. And I, of course, I did from Spider Man. I was already in good shape, but um, it's very different. That's that's a muscle suit, you know. That's, mm. I mean, and all those guys like actually have great bodies and like you know work out and they're like fully trained. Like they could be Spider Man anyway. But you know, from uh, from my perspective, I'm not you know really a you know acrobat or you know crazy gym guy but I, I, I wanted to look good in, in the suit too so I, I started working out for that show. Do you feel like a sex symbol now? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not in your day. Should I? I wake up in the morning every day in the mirror and I'm like sex symbol. <laughs> <laughs> you could cut that. You could make that you could embarrass me very very nicely if you wanted to. You started really young in London. Mm -hmm. Really young. Like you were, you were a little dancing boy weren't you? That's right. I was like eight. When you did Oliver, is that That's the first right, yeah. thing? You were the understudy to Oliver mm -hmm. in the West End. In the West End. Well, start at the top. Jesus. That was a great, and actually, I only have been back to the Palladium once. I think, actually, Patina was at the Palladium with Sister Act, I believe, in uh -huh. London. Yeah, yeah. Palladium is an incredible theatre, and yeah. Oliver was just, it had been on there for a long time, and I was, I was in the second to last co uh, company okay. that was, was, in, was with um, Barry Humphreys was playing. Oh, um, yeah. Fagan. Wow. He was incredible. Um, it, was a real, it was a real playground. And I was there for a long time. You what know, was he was like there. with the kids? He was fantastic. Yeah. You know, we would have sing, like he used to do this thing where Fagan would be toasting the toast and he'd accidentally drop it onto the pit on purpose. And it was always something that he pretended to do in front of the, you know. Uh -huh. And I was getting to watch that and learn those kind of things, like how you, how you could push things and like uh -huh. play with things and pretend that they were, you know. And that was, as a kid, it was a real experience. I did actually get knocked out underneath that set once. I got the, the drain fell on my head what? when all the boys are running out in you know like the street urchins are kind of coming out through the streets. They they forgot I was there and they just dropped the iron grate, which was an iron grate, and just knocked me out. And like my this mom was like, "Where the hell everything. is my son?" And I was just underneath the stage. Are you, are you kidding, kidding me? No, I'm, I'm fully serious. Yeah. Do you own like a we few didn't talk about it at the time? No, absolutely. The we didn't talk about it at the time because yeah, we could have probably you know gone a lot of trouble, but um, or I could have got somebody in a lot of trouble. But wow. Um, yeah. That's terrifying. It was a good story to tell, though. I was, I was <laughs> yeah. kind of like, I was like, I felt my mom made me feel very heroic afterwards. I actually may have seen you as a child because I saw that weird Android Weber musical, Whistle Down the Wind. <laughs> and I saw it towards the end of the run, and you went into that. You probably would. I was in there. I think I saw you. Class, yeah. I remember you were brilliant. Oh, cool. I went, Thanks. that kid's going to make it on Broadway. Oh, uh, that's so funny. That was a weird show. That was an interesting show. Okay, interesting. I used to get in a lot I love of Android Weber. Love, love yeah. Android Weber. But that one was like a Jesus figure and a barn and a bunch of kids and. A, kid, a woman named Swallow. Sparrow. Yeah, I what often. Was her name? Uh, yeah, Swallow was it? Swallow. Her name was yeah. Swallow. That's a pretty song. That one, though, the Whistle Down the Wind song. I think the music in that was pretty cool. I never. I um. I actually had to go back and understand the show because as a kid I didn't really understand what was going on, and then I went back and kind of looked. I was like, oh, I, I think I understand the story. Now. I might need to go back. I saw yeah. it as an adult, but I might need to go. Did back. They, there's a huge freeway that lifted up. Do you remember that thing? The, like Ugh. a huge piece of scenery, yes. of which I hung off one performance and nearly got. Expelled or taken so off. So you, you, so you do have this sort of uh, idiot monkey reflex. element to you. Yeah. <laughs> you. You like to <laughs> climb, and this is part of you. I guess so. Then you were in Britannia High. I don't know why Correct. I'm using an accent to say Britannia it. High. It's just a very. <laughs> but and when I heard about this show, it was about like a performing arts school, right? Mm -hmm. And I immediately said, "Oh my God, they ripped off Glee!" But then I realized it was actually before Glee. So I was wrong. I'm sorry. I immediately accused that show of. It was a very, in, the, the show, um, when it came out, was it was very different, you know, when we first, the first concept of the show was very different to what, you know, ended up actually being on television. And I think we all thought, you know, the show, I mean, it, it was an incredible concept, you know, yeah. we were very excited about it. There's some really cool young talent from the UK. And I thought, you know, we thought the show was going to do something different, but then, um, you know, I, it's, it seemed to us, I mean, I'm sure that somebody had already had the idea prior to seeing Britannia High or even knowing that it existed in America, but then when Glee came out, it just made so much sense. It was like, oh, that's how you do it. That's how the show is done. Um, Meaning that Britannia still, High didn't do it right? Not right, no. I don't think uh. we, we quite, we, I mean, it, was, it was a little confused. I think there were a lot of passionate people involved and incredibly talented people on the yeah. creative team, but everybody was kind of just, there's no time and lots of money and just like a big, you know, everybody trying to get it right at the same time. Some great things came out of it. You know, I really enjoyed filming it. The, some of the music was really great. You had a great, great song called Proud. Yeah, I love that song. That's a beautiful song. Yeah, um, I really enjoy that. And, you know, Steve Mack and Wayne Hector who wrote that music and, and Elliot Kennedy and Guy Chambers, I mean, incredible songwriter, you know, is Robbie Williams' his voice. So it's like, um, the voice behind his music, it's, it's you know, it was, 
It was a really incredible experience. You were the alternate Spider-Man. You went on a lot in Spider-Man Throughout mm -hmm. the Dark, right? Do you, how many times did you actually do the show? Do you know? A lot. Like, how many? <laughs> you don't know? I mean, I was on Over, every like week anyway, twice hundred. a week. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I was on twice a week anyway. That was right. my schedule, so right. I would do twice a week. But, I mean, Reeve was, Reeve didn't usually, didn't call out. It was just, I think the show, um, you know, required him to go to different places and do press and stuff, so I was on a lot. And, right. Um, you know, I then ended up doing quite a few shows, like, you know, holidays and vacations and stuff, and so I was on a lot. Did you Strange get way. to keep any of the um, Spider-Man outfits, costumes? I got so mad at them for not letting me keep my Spider-Man. It seems like you should. It seems like you deserve one. I wish. Would they said they'd cut, cut it up and give me the, the breastplate, and I was like, I don't want... No. And they're like, well, you can't wear it to Halloween parties. I'm like, I wouldn't wear this to Halloween parties. I would dress up as Spider-Man at like two o'clock in the morning to watch and TV. run around. Oh, you run like, around. Like outside and convince people I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> I wouldn't wear it to a Halloween party. That'd be awesome. <laughs> like, I'm not using it for like a Halloween party. I would actually pretend to be Spider-Man. You could try to like, like, like fix minor crimes, like you know. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be I mean, with that suit, if you saw something, because it's so realistic, yeah. and, like you like look so good in the yeah. suit. It could probably scare a few people. That, I do like seeing Spider-Man time, in Times Square. I'm just like, no. No. No, no. Not cutting it. Not cutting it, mate. I enjoy you on Twitter because you're a little pissy sometimes. <laughs> I, I enjoy that. And these are some tweets that I liked. Can oh, I read God. you? Oh, God. Here we go. I Here liked when you career. said, um, coffee, banana, Advil, gummy bears, disgusting $60 Starbucks yogurt that tasted like sweetened hair wax, Gatorade, another Gatorade, colon, Pippin. Tell me it isn't true, though. Tell me that that stuff. Oh, does about the not, yogurt. Yeah, I don't. Buy and it's like seven thousand dollars. <laughs> seven thousand. <000. laughs> it's like that's seven thousand. That's seven thousand dollars. I'm like, it's just hair wax, and I just so happened to pass Starbucks because they're everywhere. <laughs> but is that so? Is that your life at Pippin? No, that that's what that's what you that's what that's how you get through Pippin. That was like a morning. I was just like, oh god, this is my life. Okay, here's another banana one. Advil. You wrote, "How I love the sensation of air conditioning exhaust blowing people's farts and even hotter air on my face as I stroll down ninth. <laughs> Gently touching my soul. <laughs> that was fun. And then here's another one I liked. You wrote. That's also the truth. Have you walked down Ninth Avenue yeah, it's recently? Disgusting. Don't they know who you are? Jesus. I mean, jeez, those air conditioners. They should get some respect. And then you wrote. Jen Damiano is truly beautiful. Hashtag shy. <laughs> That's not bitchy. That's that the was truth. sweet. That was sweet. That was a, that was a segue. A segue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they <laughs> call a it. A segue from the air conditioning. Um, yeah, it's just a segue right in. Jen Damiano, she she's 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 pretty gorgeous, huh? Yeah. She sat there. She has. She, yeah, she has. You watched that, that episode? I did, yeah. Did did you learn anything from watching that episode? No. You knew it all. No, I knew. I, I, I think well, I do now. You are um dating her. Absolutely. That's sweet. Peter Parker got got Mary Jane. Yeah, Pippin got Mary Jane. Pip I'm sorry, Pippin, Pippin, Pippin. Uh <laughs> so it, did that um how how did that happen? Well, we actually dated during the show for a very brief okay. amount of time. Okay. Um, it was, you know, it was a very turbulent kind of show, both personally and professionally. And I think once we had some time to kind of figure stuff out, yeah. it was just destined to happen, and we came back together. So, so like you fell in love one night on the flight, or like during that balcony song, or well, Jen Damiano. Yeah, there's not much more to say. Yeah, so I fell in love with her. She's yeah, she's she's pretty she's pretty stunning. She's Can you actually special. handle how physically beautiful she is? is it's ever... difficult. <laughs> Do you have moments? Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, she's great. So anyway, say hi to her. Hi, Jen. No, for me, say hi. No, hey, I mean she's watching. Hi, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> how I said hi. Hashtag shy. Um, hashtag hashtag shy. Hashtag shy. Uh, you have an EP out, which is and speaking of beautiful. Uh, beautiful songs, three songs. It's called No Sound at All, although there is a sound to it. So what does that title mean for an album name? It just, it just happened. <laughs> don't think we don't joke about it in the studio. Duncan's like, and the next song's going to be like, lots of sounds. <laughs> and Duncan it's really Sheik. simple. <laughs> yes. Duncan Sheik produced this album with you, these yeah. songs. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like, what, He just said, like, I want to work with you. Um, well, He's a big I mean, no, I, 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 High fan. He, uh, uh, Ron, his Ron Shapiro, uh, my manager, my music uh -huh. manager, I met on a on a reading. I did a Regina Spector reading for um, uh, a, Tina, a Tina Landau project that hasn't yet been confirmed. But I was um, I was doing this reading, and and Ron was there, and he said, "Do you do your own music?" And I was like, "Yes." And 
he then hooked me up with Duncan and Duncan heard some of my stuff and that was that was how we got into um, that's how we got into it and they are three very soulful beautiful songs thank you what's the mood I think songs are mood songs they're like walking songs I think I, okay. I, I, I kind of About Ninth Avenue with the air conditioning yeah with the air conditioning to keep you cold when you're walking through <laughs> The summer streets. It's so funny that they were released when they when they were because they're they're winter songs. Like oh, the, okay. I'm a winter Did guy. You, you record yeah. them in the winter? Yeah, and actually when we were recording them, it was so incredible up at Duncan. Duncan has an incredible studio up in Garrison. And um I'm just the luckiest person on earth to be able to record up there because um the place that he has is just in the middle of, you know, this kind of kind of hill and it's just this huge landscape of trees uh -huh. and we woke up on the day of recording and everything was crystal white and so that was I mean I, I had actually written the songs almost a year prior okay and so had been working on them since and it, it just a whole year had come around and I would finally formulated my thoughts properly with what I wanted to do with music and there I was in the studio with Duncan and it was snowing it was freezing cold and we opened the windows and it was just it was perfect and everyone needs to get it it's online you can get it and it's cheap cause it's only three songs yeah it's just three songs yeah, two, nothing to two lose. dollars three dollars you're gonna love it under three dollars, and I, I, you know, I'm proud. I think it feels like its own thing. It's, it's, it maybe, yeah. uh, you know, it's obviously, you know, reminiscent of some of the people that I listen to, but I, it, it, it has its own thing. True or false? You designed that album cover. I did. That's pretty cool. I, I had like to do it, it at night. I had to do that in one night. That was in the middle of Pippin too. And Ron was like, "You want to release your music? You need an album cover." So I was like cutting up pieces of like a clock and like putting my pin, and then like you know putting it through filters on Photoshop and just trying to find, trying to make it work. You have dark hair on the album cover. You know, you need like a lighter version. I know. It's like, who is this person? It was <laughs> no, a, you yeah, interesting them. career choice. I'm just like, uh, make make myself for somebody, and then to completely change my look. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Don't match the front of house. Don't <laughs> no, match the yeah. album cover. <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> who is he? Uh, tell me about porridge. Hot topics. Porridge is your Hot topics. Your porridge dog. is just kind of awesome. Porridge is just a little Yorkie. Maybe Yorkie Havy Poo, I don't know. Uh -huh. But I, I got him in Spider Man. Um, and he, um, you know, after I, I was going to get a dog when I came to the States because my, my dog in um, England died. Ferdy, uh -huh. um, he passed away when I just came out here. I was really upset about it. And um, obviously, he couldn't be here anyway. So I was thinking about getting a dog. I was, uh, we, were, we were on the way to the NSPCA to try and maybe find a rescue. And I walked into this shop and saw this dog. I was like, oh God, that's it. Yeah, because he just kind of looked at me and that was it. And he's in Pippin. That's what I should make, make very clear. Show. We're not going to tell you when, because otherwise, you know, I'd give it away. Don't want to give it away. Okay. Do you get? Is there an extra paycheck for porridge? D yeah, there's a there's a paycheck. He gets a little bit of money. Nice. He just puts all the porridge. Pays, money. It basically pays for his food and his grooming. It's cool. The porridge money should just go in like a separate account and see what happens to it. Like you should like just right, blow absolutely. that money. I do. No, he has a separate account or something. He has a separate account. You know, so he oh, there's can deal a porridge with his account. Affairs. Just in case he wants to sue me. Have there been any uh, mishaps with working with that dog in that show? No, I mean, oh yeah, one. One mishap in Boston last night. He ate all my hair wax. <laughs> he was confused. Your Starbucks he was confused because he yogurt? thought it was a Starbucks or yogurt. your actual <laughs> hair wax. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean that is confusing. Um, Actually, ate your I've hair. I've completely destroyed all my chances of ever getting free Starbucks now. You didn't realize that? <laughs> right next to the theater. The coffee's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for keeping me awake. So, so ate the hair wax and then what came and out then, the other end? Um, yeah, you don't want to know. Not so good. he wasn't going on stage, but I picked up because Patina's dog was there, little Bella. Yeah. So she was just there and I, like she's so sweet. She kind of just stands there and just is unaware of life. <laughs> and this dog was just like this. So I just kind of like it, she, I see Nancy Harrington kind of pushing the dog out, and so I just ran off stage and I kind of bounced it on stage onto the stool. Do those two dogs hang out, Patina's dog and your dog? Porridge is a little um, friendly. Oh. So we, you know, I mean, she's just, Bella's just like, can you just please stop? Oh, uh, uh, diva, diva dog. Well, I mean, Porridge is just a bit of an ass. So that's, <laughs> I, think, I think it's more that por Porridge is annoying <laughs> than Bella's a diva, but. I asked some fans to submit questions for you. Okay, cool. On Instagram. So we're going to look at them and, you know, you can interact with them a little bit. Awesome. Safety of your <laughs> show people chair. Oh, see that? Are you ready? Hello, Mac. You're doing saunas. I was just wondering, like, is it difficult doing eight shows a week? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it difficult. Seems hard. It's incredibly difficult. And it's incredibly difficult to maintain because you want to be able to give 100% for every, every audience, and I do. It's just, you know, I mean, with a show of this nature, um, it's not Pippin. It's not just Pippin anymore. Yeah. It's a circus show. And to keep up with everybody else, we built the role and designed it so I could be doing the things that they're doing 
and incorporate it so it wasn't just two different shows. So all of those moments, you know, when they, they come in the show, I'm, I, I prepare myself for and I, I know it's going to be very difficult. Um, and then on top of that, it's probably the most vocally demanding show for a tenor that there is. It's, it's and you have a beautiful voice. Let's get that out there. So do you not, do you like whisper talk th when you're not on stage? Are you I'm supposed to. How's that going? It's not easy. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy, but I haven't had any actual vocal issues. Like, I, right. keep, I am very you know, preemptive with that. I always go to my, my great ENTs, and I just I, I check my voice like once or twice a week, and there's never an issue. My folds always look good, so that's, you know. But it's, you know, it's, yes, it is difficult to do eight shows a week. All right, let's do another one. Hi, Matthew and Broadway.com. I just wanted to know what your favorite and least favorite part about playing Pippin is. Bye. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Favorite uh -oh. and least favorite part. We got, uh, this is high and low. Are the producers watching? <laughs> um, well, the fa my favorite part of playing Pippin is playing Pippin. It's like the best role. It's so fun. It's so fun. And as the story, just, just being able to get to explore and, to, and really to just to work with the people that I'm working with on stage. Yeah. Um, is there anything bad about playing Pippin? No, I don't think there's anything bad about playing Pippin. Um, there's nothing bad about playing Pippin. There, there are no lows. That's great. Next. Hi, Broadway.com and Paul and Matthew. My question for Matthew is, is your relationship with Rachel as good offstage as your onstage chemistry in Pippin would suggest? I just want to say, like, you guys are incredible. And for me, actually, that's why this production of Pippin is so brilliant, because of what you two do in the second act. Yeah, and what Rachel's found with this character, too. I think what she's managed to find and, and, and bring to life with, with is imperative to this production. Yeah. And what she's done with the second act and, and how she... And how she brings human life to, um, to surface in this production. Um, yeah, me and Rachel get on great. She's a really great person. She's a, she's a lot of fun, and um, she's a lot of fun to work with. Now your hair kind of matches a little more, right? I know, yeah. It's now we're like a real little blonde family in the end. Hi, Matthew and Broadway.com. My name is Erica, and I was wondering, what is your most embarrassing onstage moment? Thank you. So many. So many, really? <laughs> What was like my most, you well, my most, that thing my, fell on you as a kid? Yeah, that was, well, I mean, l not very embarrassing because I wasn't conscious for it, but... Um, <laughs> were you actually out for a while? You were like, yeah, I was out for a good 15 seconds. Oh, man. Um, I once completely forgot one of the verses of Extraordinary. And so I just, as I walked over, I forgot the compost line. And so as I walked over, I saw Andrew and I just blanked and then just smiled and the music was going and everyone was doing their choreography and I was there holding the, the bucket of compost, and I was like, <laughs> silence. <laughs> the whole verse, I was like, I gotta do X, and I went straight back into it, but I, yeah. I completely, that was, that was embarrassing, but I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure nobody actually noticed. Maybe, right. maybe they did. I'm sure right. the people who know the music did. But um, I just smiled the whole time. Because you're a very pale face, turn a bright shade of red. Um, yeah, no, that does happen too. Yeah. yeah, that's a trait, unfortunately being pale. All right, let's, let's do the next one. Matthew, what was the best piece of advice somebody has given you that you believe makes you successful to this day? When I was like, I think five or something, I was going in for um, a movement exam with my mom. She, she, she set me up for these exams and I ran in and there's this kind of thing where you run around in a circle to music at the beginning. I fell flat on my face and burst my nose open and started bleeding everywhere. And I went outside, I went outside and started crying, like a little, like I was crying you know, crazy, um, crazy amounts of tears. And my mom was like, either you go back in the room or you fail. And so I went back in the room and I cried my whole way through the exam, but I did the exam and I passed the exam. And I, I mean, I, I, I just thought of that when he asked me that question, because I was thinking, mm. I mean, I guess you just have to, you're gonna get hit, you're gonna get hit a lot. You're gonna, get con you're gonna continue to get hit the whole way through your career. But you just have to be resilient and you have to, you know, keep going. Good um, advice. Wow. You got hit by Billy Elliot in that movie, didn't you? That only made me stronger. Kid smacked you? He hit me so hard. <laughs> I think he loves seeing me. He's just like, oh, yeah, you're that kid that I punched in the face. <laughs> Smile for the camera. I'm just like, yeah, I'm the guy that got punched in the face. <laughs> okay, one more. Hi, Matthew and Broadway.com. I'm Sarah. I absolutely loved your performance as Pippin, but I wanted to know if there were any other secret dream roles that you had or any other shows that you'd really like to be in. Thanks. Dream roles. I want to be Iron Man. 
Iron Man. I, yeah, you said that you like that on another Broadway.com feature. You like, you Sorry. Like, you Iron Sorry, Man. Sorry, it's fan? not original. Sorry, it's not exclusive. Sorry. Right. But right. I do want to be Iron Man. L meaning, I thought you just wanted to be him, not like play him. Um. You want to. I that's a hard question. I mean, I feel like it will never. If I say out loud in this moment that I want to be him, it will never happen. So, with the hopes that someday I get cast as Iron Man, um, I'm not going to say it. But yeah, I mean, I you know, I did actually go to a costume place and ask them if they designed me like a really good one. An Iron Man. An Iron Man outfit. Like, like you want to wear like the a whole proper thing. Proper plastic one, you know, like a really like or like metal. Proper plastic. You know, a proper plastic <laughs> Iron Man suit. <laughs> You know what I mean, like a molding one, but but um, I'm very disappointed with the ones in Times Square. I'm just like, you're just wearing a costume. <sighs> I know, it's bad. You don't look like you could take off <laughs> at any moment or just like stop a bus with your hand. You look like the bus would flatten you. <laughs> weak, they're weak. Weak, weak superheroes. Sorry, just weak. Uh, okay, well, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank I you, love the thanks hair. for having me. Thanks love for, the yeah. EP, everyone needs to download. $3. Three dollars. Come on, Duncan Sheik liked it. Duncan Sheik liked it. I guess he liked it. Yeah, he loved it. And the Pippin album is great. And yeah, the Pippin show, great. the Pippin show with the music box theater, that's pretty great too. That's pretty. So fun. Everyone needs to check out all of those things, and eventually you will see this man as Iron Man. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Good Thanks to see you. Me. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah.